looks good. This is quintessential street food. You come to Vietnam, you come to Saigon, walk down the street, and you're going to find this. You're going to find this on nearly every other street corner. And you will not be able to pass it up. You'll see it. It looks beautiful. You'll smell it. It smells wonderful. And you will want to sit down on this little teeny tiny stool at this little teeny tiny table and eat a lot of this. Mm. Hello and welcome to this edition of Talk Vietnam coming to you from Ho Chi Minh City. Now you've just seen in the previous clip a Richard Sterling enjoying street food here in Vietnam. And now Richard is a travel and food writer who has been based in Ho Chi Minh City since 2008. And uh, Richard is the principal writer of the World Food Series of the Lonely Planet, which is the largest travel guidebook and digital media publisher in the world. The New York Times book page has dubbed him as the Indiana Jones of gastronomy and praising him for his willingness to go anywhere, court any danger for the sake of a good meal and a good story. So it's our honor to have here in our studio today of Talk Vietnam, Richard with us, for him to share more about his stories and experience. Hello, Richard. Hello, and thank you for having me. Thank you. How are you today? I'm just doing great. I just had some delicious street food. Wonderful. Well, we'll talk more about that. Um, and now, as a veteran, a food and travel writer, uh, how do you rank Vietnamese cuisine amongst kind of the world cuisine? It is, uh, uh, without doubt, uh, amongst the top tier of world cuisines. And it is unique among world cuisines because of its ability and its willingness to accept foreign influences. They, we look at uh, Vietnamese cuisine and we can see Chinese influences, we can see Indian influences, Thai, French, and lately Italian and American influences. But the Vietnamese cooks, they always do the same thing. When they take these foreign influences, they tweak them a little bit to make them their own. This is what I think makes Vietnamese cuisine so interesting. What, what do you think for you, yourself, makes Vietnamese cuisine so delicious? What, what makes it so special for you um, and sets it apart from other cuisines? Well, a lot of things, but I'll just give you an example here. And that is the uh, regular and continuous use of fresh herbs, mint, basil, coriander and so on and herbs that I don't even recognize sometimes <laughs> uh, and and these are used in such a way well you know placed on the table and the diner can can put them into the food and they make the food uh, so flowery so aromatic and this is one of the uh, uh, things that distinguishes Vietnamese cuisine I can walk into a room completely blindfolded and I could smell different kinds of foods and I might not recognize Chinese, I might not recognize French, but I will always recognize the Vietnamese cuisine just by the smell. Now recently two specialties of Vietnamese food made it to the list uh, of the CNN world's top 50 dishes and those are pho and mm. gọi cuốn. Um, and then in March 2011, bánh mì was added to the Oxford English Dictionary. Yeah. In addition to pho, which was added previously. So what do you think of all of these kind of recognition um, worldwide of Vietnamese cuisine? Well, I think it's just a natural progression. Uh, I, I was not at all surprised when those uh, words uh, appeared in the dictionary. I mean, we use them all the time um, in, in California. Everybody knows what it means when you say bánh mì. Uh, it's, it's, it's like hamburger. It's like hamburger. And it just tells us that uh, uh, Vietnamese culture is making its mark on world culture. It's becoming integrated 
with all of the other cuisines in the world, and it's gaining the respect and admiration of people everywhere, and it's just, it's, it's becoming the normal thing in so many places, mm -hmm. and that's wonderful. Yep, definitely something to be proud of yes, uh, for Vietnam. Yes, um, I'm proud for Vietnam <laughs> because of that. Yes. In terms of the dishes, what Vietnamese dishes do you like the most? I mean, what would you eat, say, on a normal day going out? Well, one of the things that I enjoy very commonly, of course, is banh mi, banh mi tit. Uh, especially uh, banh mi tit heo. Yes. I love a the good pork, pork sandwich. Yes, the yeah. pork sandwich. But uh, one of the most fun things to eat for me is banh seo. Yes, yeah, the sizzling pancakes because you, or you, the sizzling crepes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, people have a tendency to uh, translate this uh, bonseo as pancake. Uh, no, 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 no. Crepe. It's not, not good. It's a crepe, yes. or you could call it a dosa, a dosa. but it's not mm -hmm. a pancake. Uh, but I love to, uh, you know, you, you tear it apart a little bit and then you wrap it in some leaves and you <laughs> put some herbs in there and you wrap it and you roll it and then you dip it in sauce. Definitely getting hungry yeah, hearing you yeah, um, yeah. describe it, it that it's, way. It's, it's one of those things where you get to play with your food. Mm -hmm. And and that's that's a fairly common aspect of Vietnamese cuisine. There's a lot of things where you wrap and you roll. Once a sound engineer on U.S. Space Shuttle Columbia, Richard Stirling decided to quit the job to devote all his time to writing, a passion he's had since young age. Richard has traveled to some 100 countries in all continents. The American food and travel writer is now the author of more than a dozen books and scores of magazine articles. Richard first came to Ho Chi Minh City in early 1990s without thinking that the city would one day become his home. Here and there in Vietnam, he delves into the way people cook and eat, through which he learns more about their culture, understands their lifestyle, and discovers.
to you know, bizarre anecdotes, things that you know would only happen to somebody if they really threw themselves into you know into Vietnam. Having experienced the students' service and tasted their dishes, Richard normally meets up with students afterwards for a group discussion. Richard expresses his constructive criticism with the students while sharing his own experience of food across the world. Thật sự là rất thú vị khi được trò chuyện với anh Richard, một người đi du lịch vòng quanh thế giới và viết về ẩm thực. Tất nhiên anh có rất nhiều kinh nghiệm trong ngành ẩm thực. Và qua những chia sẻ của anh Richard thì có đó mình có thể học được rất nhiều điều về ẩm thực trên toàn thế giới. Đặc biệt là ẩm thực Ý mà mình đang theo đuổi. Richard is a firm believer of food being Vietnam's key to success in the field of tourism and hospitality. With such events, he hopes to accompany Vietnamese youth in bringing the country's gastronomic scene to new heights. Now, do you agree that, I mean, as we saw here um, in the clip, you came to kind of taste some of the students who are training in hospitality mm -hmm. and uh, tr tasting directly their food, talking to all of your other friends who are in the food industry as well, um, and the, you talk to them about tourism, the in tourism industry. Mm -hmm. So gastronomy, um, I bet in your opinion, is a very big part of the tourism industry in Vietnam. It is a critical part for Vietnam. Vietnam is going to be, I think, the last great first in international tourism. Vietnam is going to compete with all of the big uh, destinations. It's going to compete with uh, the coast of Spain. It's going to compete with um, uh, Acapulco and Cancun in Mexico. It's going to compete with Bali. It's going to compete with Hawaii. And it's going to do that in large part through its food. I think the future of tourism in Vietnam lies in three places. The highlands, the coastline, and the islands, and the food. Mm. People, when they plan their visit to Vietnam, they start thinking about what they're going to eat. Yes. Let's go to Vietnam and enjoy the food. Nobody ever says that about, say, Egypt. Mm -hmm. They say, let's go to Egypt and see the pyramids. Now, what suggestions would you have for the Vietnamese tourist industry kind of improve? I mean, obviously, there, there are still um, holes to fill, fill and, you know, room to, for improvement, basically. So what should the Vietnamese tourism industry improve on within the realm of gastronomy? Keeping up-to-date information because the cities are developing so fast that uh, a, a, a great restaurant that was on this corner yesterday is not there anymore. Mm -hmm. And so uh, guidebooks, printed guidebooks, are out of date almost from the moment they're published. And so I think that the uh, uh, internet would be a good way to solve that problem. I think that if tourism authorities were to cooperate with journalists, international journalists and local journalists, and foreign journalists that are stationed here like myself, if, say, Saigon tourists could uh, put together and promote a really top-notch website where we could keep <coughs> the, the reader informed of all the changes, where did that restaurant go? Mm. Or if, uh, if, that, if it's gone, where can you get the dish that they used to specialize in? Sort of a forum for information in, in terms yeah, of finding yeah. food. And, and it would not be hard to do, and mm -hmm. it would not be expensive to do. It would just take some time and some effort to do. I think that's one, one thing that, uh, that the tourism industry can do. Another is to continue the training of young people. Of the students. Yeah, just like the ones that uh, we talked to at the school, uh, there's, there, there, there needs to be more of that. There needs to, there's not enough of that. And uh, promote Vietnamese students and cooks going abroad. Mm -hmm. I think, I think <clears throat> that 
Vietnamese gastronomy and tourism in general has to be marketed more aggressively, more efficiently. And I think if they do that, they're going to enjoy great success. Now, as we said from beginning to end, food for you is culture. Do you find that food here in Vietnam is, uh, serves as a sort of a bridge between you and the Vietnamese people? What do you think about their lifestyles and their characters? Um, do you learn about that through food? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. As I said, you, uh, any culture is revealed through its cuisine. And I would say that um, it's not really a bridge between me and Vietnamese culture. It's a marriage. Yes, it's a marriage. <laughs> As you said, a love affair <laughs> yeah. between yeah. the writer and his yeah, subject. That, that reviewer was spot on when he said this is a love affair between the author and his subject. Yes, so we could say you're in love with Vietnam. Yes, you can. <laughs> now, please share with us some of your future plans. What do you look to do? Can Vietnam expect to kind of have you around for a while? I have no plans to leave. <laughs> now, I don't know what the future may hold, uh, but I have no plans to leave. Yes. How about some future plans? I mean, obviously, you have this book coming out. Um, what yeah, else? Uh, a new book, and uh, I have been uh, talking with a uh, uh, television production company about doing a travel program here, oh, a series. Wow. A that series. would be very And that would help to promote the tourism industry and the uh, and, and, and the, the culinary world. It would do great. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, the, what we're talking about right now is maybe uh, 12 episodes. 12 episodes. Well, yeah. we're looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the it. Very I best don't know if it's going to come off yet or not, but we're, you know, we're in initial discussions about it. Yes. So uh, I'm, I'm hopeful for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, if that doesn't uh, pan out, well, another book. Wonderful. Well, the very best of luck to you and all of your endeavors, especially this book can, coming out on uh, street food and also your plans to do a television show. We'll, we'll be looking forward to it. And well, thank you for coming to Talk Vietnam. Thank you for having me. Thank you it's very much. It's been a much. pleasure. Now, that was our talk edition with Richard Sterling, American travel and food writer. We hope you enjoyed the session as much as I did. And we'll see you more next time here on Talk Vietnam. Goodbye for now.